Welcome back, VST here, Venom Tech guys. I'm running the latest S23 Ultra update in Europe for the EU XCSC. Why? Because I apparently have the AWF7. Samsung is doing a strange thing, rolling on different updates versions. It started with the June update with a WF1, then 3, and now also 7. And again, there are other versions like a WFD, so it is still weird, guys. But hey, I installed the July update yesterday, so I've been using the phone for more than 24 hours, guys. And I wanted to do some benchmarking. But first things first, there is this person on Twitter, TaronVats33. This guy spends a lot of time by checking resources like, for example, the Geekbench results, and he discovered that Samsung are now testing the One UI 6 already, and apparently they managed to get 2140 for the single core score, guys, and 5557 with the multi core score. It's Android 14, it's Samsung Galaxy S23 plus and um, so yeah this is really amazing so go and sub for this guy i'm gonna link the link down below to his profile into the video description Taron Vat. also what i want to test right now is how much i'm gonna get with king batch 6 because yesterday i tested it with the king bench 5 and honestly directly after updating the phone i really got yeah not great results compared to let's say last time with the king bench 5 i was able to get something like 1400 with a single core score and almost 4,500 with the multi-core score, but now with the King Bench 6, guys, it is a whole different story. I'm gonna run the benchmark. I'm also going to show you the starting temperature. It's 31, which is quite nice. I have the AC on, it's 24, as you just see, yep. It is 24 Celsius here. It is already very hot um, in the area that I live, guys. So 31 degrees for the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Let's just see how much we're gonna get out of Geekbench 6. And have in mind the score that Tarun was able to show us on Twitter with using Android 14 and One UI 6. And then, guys, I'm also going to test 3D marks, stress test for stability, and run some other benchmarks to just do it the proper way. And if you're here for the first time and you want this extra touch with deep, deep, deep reviews, then, yeah, you might want to sub for this channel. I do also other videos. Well, you have to see it with your own eyes. So, yeah, let's just accelerate and see what we're going to get. Uploading the results and let's just see. Whoa, almost 2000 guys and almost 5000. So let's just see compared to what apparently we are gonna get with One UI 6. I would say, yes, certainly there is an increase. But guys, what is even more important is that the Geekbench type of test is almost not stressing the Galaxy 33.9. So, what I'm gonna do right now without any further ado, guys, I'm going to start the 3D Mark and not only 3D Mark, I'm going to start the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test and yeah, just see how much we're going to get out of this beautiful test. What we are looking here is to estimate the stability rating, the comparison between uh, the highest loop score to the lowest loop score. So if this gap is big one, then stability is low. If the gap is very narrow, then we have a good stability, which means you can run your favorite game for hours before encountering some frame drops and before the phone apparently burns your hands like the Xiaomi Torting Ultra or the Oppo Find X6. So let's accelerate. And we are now in the final round doing one more check 44.5 so we can confirm once again that the 3d mark extreme stress test is for sure putting some heat on the s23 ultra now i've seen stability rating between 60 percent up to 70 something i really doubt that i'm gonna reach 70 again but yeah let's hope that still i can be surprised by the way the phone feels hot in my hair, oh, 71.9. This is indeed very good, guys. Let's analyze. The best loop score was 3,700, which is indicated by the first score here, we'll loop one. The lowest loop score was 2,673, which is the loop number 20. So this is actually quite nice. We've seen such drops like this before, guys. 
So this is not so uncommon, but the good news is that still the stability rating is almost 72%. And I told you in the beginning, this is calculated taking the highest loop score versus the lowest loop score. The performance range, let's analyze guys. The battery dropped from 51% to 37% and the temperature risen from 34% to 44%, which I was able also to confirm with my temp gun, showing once more that this internal software temperature monitor is actually quite nice. It's of course reading some data out of the phone directly. The frame rate guys, 11 FPS was the lowest frame rate up to 27 FPS, the highest one. Now let's just analyze the battery and the frame rate. So I'm gonna put guys here, everything on one place so that we can just see everything in one graph so we have here the battery that you can see dropping this is this green line we have here the temperature is slowly rising guys and we see here the frame rate so i can tell you i'm a bit impressed honestly i was not really hoping to get another 70 percent i can show you some of my previous results guys this was done on the 23rd of june only 60 percent and you can just see guys, not only have we like a big drop here, but the lowest loop score was 2,191 resulting into this rather lower rating. Then I can show you another one in June, 48% guys. And again, I'm trying to test this under stable conditions, temperatures whatsoever. So here, similar drop by the way. Then we can also see the data from May, 75%, but you can just see it was rather weird. And by the way, I'm using standard temperature settings guys from the Thermal Guardian. So nothing really so unstandard here. So with that said guys, I believe that the July update is really able to reach some nice, nice scores in the benchmarks I can probably run some other benchmark as well let's start this one cpdt the cross-platform tool this is a very nice tool to test the sequential read and write so guys if you don't have this call download it directly from the play store this generates some random data and then the phones try to read from the memory and then write to the memory guys not only using sequential reading and writing but also the random write which is actually quite nice because it then gives you an indication of how fast this happens and when we read all right storage right this indicates really the performance of the phone because ram memory is used the flash inside the nan memory is used which is the ufs4 so it's actually a quite nice test and we can just see guys we have some nice values we memory copy is almost 11 gigabits per second guys the random read was 8 megabytes per second random write almost 40 megabytes per second the sequential read was almost half a g i mean i know 552 megabytes per second and the sequential write is 724. there is also another test that i do recommend guys it's called the android bench it's a very old one but it can also give you a nice indication right testing all your storages and i always like to run those two tests to just be able to compare and see if i'm just getting like the similar results so one more time we have the sequential reading and writing guys, the random write as well. But then here we have also some SQLite inserts update and deletes testing the traffic. So overall random write here, 184 megabytes per second. The random read here, almost 450 sequential write. You can just see that's almost um, one and a half G in second. And the sequential read here is almost three gigabytes per second. So this is what the phone can do guys. And I'm really impressed with these results, uh, specifically with the stability rating I got from the 3D Mark Extreme. One thing's for sure guys, I just received an update from Antutu. And although my phone is still a bit heated, right? So just for the sake of having a more complete test. 38, all right, 38 is not so bad. I will also run the Andu 2 benchmark, guys. I am using the version 10.06 OB6, and I'm gonna be testing this one more time again to just see what I am gonna get. So prepare yourself for the last test, which is gonna be Andu 2, and then, yeah, I will do a short wrap up. Here it is, guys. One million and four hundred and 
400,000, almost 410k, the benchmark monitor is like this. So we started off with almost 40, reach 43. Let's just do also a temp reading. Just after the test is finished, yeah, 40 Celsius, not so bad at all. So CPU is 361, GPU almost half a mil, the memory quarter of a million and user experience almost the same. There are tips and tricks to get a bit more, but that's not the idea of the video. I just wanted you to see really what is going on here and what happens. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed content like this. If that's the case, don't forget to sub to the channel, guys. Please, you and your families stay safe. VST over and bye.